What's up, guys? Kendall Rusing here with Get a Grip. So this is not the actual intro to the podcast because my intro to the podcast I filmed with Fion, but I'm filming this now in, let's see, we're in January because... I need to preface this podcast with something. Um, we got the really, really exciting news about a week after I filmed with Fion that Polaris added a Women's Grand Prix for, I believe, the first time. It's a 145-pound Women's Grand Prix. It's happening in March. Fion is like the face of the event. She's on the poster. And there's a, did I already say, there's a $20,000 grand prize. Um, absolutely incredible. So we are super, super stoked. The reason that's worth mentioning is because at the time that I recorded this with Fionn, she had been talking a lot on social media about the lack of women on uh, professional cards. And we talked about that a lot. <laughs> we specifically, she well, she specifically referred to Polaris because she had made a post about them after one of their cards didn't have female fights on it, right? So I just wanted to preface this. Oh, I just hit my microphone. I just wanted to preface this podcast with saying that she was very vocal about the situation. Um, Polaris actually in my opinion, had handled things really, really well. They reached out to me and I think other female athletes personally to ask our input and advice and then immediately came out with this Women's Grand Prix. They have plans for more stuff coming down the line next year that I've been informed about. And so she was very vocal um, about this issue uh, when we filmed the podcast, like right around that same time last last year, happy 2023. Um, <laughs> and I just wanted to make sure that going into this podcast, you guys know that there was a big change made. And so this definitely was not an anti-anybody podcast. This was not anti any particular card or any particular organization. This was more she and I discussing um, and, and really not anti anything. It was really discussing like, man, what are the issues? What can we do to move forward? What can we do to help create a change in this area? What can we do to give more opportunities to women that are currently competing and then women that are coming down the line that uh, want opportunities like this? And so how can we create that change? And so Fionn was talking about, and and I was agreeing that a lot of times being, vo being vocal about these things is really, really helpful. And even though sometimes it makes us look like the bad guy or in that scenario, um, she may have been criticized for the way that she spoke out. It did result in, I mean, obviously there were other factors involved um, with the decision making, but it was not unrelated to some great change that came from it. So I wanted to make that clear before we dive in so that nobody's listening and they're like, hey man, lay off. Like, look at this big event because we didn't know at the time, but it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. So make sure you guys turn into uh, tune in to Polaris in March to watch that event. I'm going to be tuning in. Beyond is going to be on the card and a slew of other amazing women. I'm going to put on a great show. And then as like, again, I said before, uh, Polaris has more events coming and more surprise fun stuff for the women later this year. So keep uh, staying in tune with them. Follow them on Instagram, tune into their shows, and support an organization that is supporting women's jujitsu. And it's funny to say it like that, actually, before I end this. Like, I hate saying, not hate, but I don't love saying, like, support the things that support the women's jujitsu because, in my opinion, they're doing the right thing. They're doing something that is also really good for their brand. So it's not to make it sound like it's a charity case or that, um, you know, it's like some special reason to to support that brand, but it's worth noting, right? Because not that is not the norm. Not all organizations are doing it. So I love what they're doing. I'm super excited to tune in. And I hope you guys do too. Okay. Without further ado, let's get into the podcast. Lots of crazy, <laughs> juicy, fun topics here. Fiona and I, <laughs> after the podcast, we were like, hmm. I wonder if there's anything of this that needs to come out because we just were so familiar with each other that we really just had like a regular conversation and that can be great, but it can also be a little spicy. So enjoy. Let me know as usual, your thoughts, what you think, any other questions for feed next time I have her on and all that good stuff. All right. Talk to you guys later. What's up guys. Welcome to get a grip podcast. We are back with episode three with one of my favorite people and jujitsu practitioners in the world. We have the amazing, you got to be very careful how you say this name. <laughs> Fionn Davis. It's not Fiona. It's not Fionn. It's not Davies or with a Z. So she is uh, the current 2022 Gi World Champion, the 2022 ADCC World Champion. And I think it's worth mentioning there's only one other human being on the planet that did that this year. It's pretty, pretty incredible. Uh, Two-time Nogi World Champion, European Champion in the weight and absolute Pan Am champion, Brazilian national champion, also a black belt in judo, and a 4-0 MMA record. And last but not least, the first Welsh 
person, I was going to say woman, but person in general to win, I believe the gay world and ADCC, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Which is cool. Just, <laughs> just casual. Just, Yay. <laughs> but anyway, Fionn, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you for having me. That was a very good pronunciation of my name. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> now it's public knowledge, just in case it wasn't. If your Instagram handle wasn't enough, then now they know. It really isn't. <laughs> I get more people calling me Fiona now than ever, actually. <laughs> or it's the surname people get wrong most. It's Davies now. And I'm like, it's, it's not that. It's Davis. Even though yeah. it is spelled Davies, to be fair. Especially for Americans, it definitely looks like Davies, but I feel like yeah. you say it enough that it's it's like worth. It's worth I, just say, too, I but... speak in third person, so that should be enough, surely. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, now we know. All right. So <laughs> super excited to get into it. Um, for those listening at the moment, Fionn is in Thailand, so we are opposite time zones and we're making it happen. She is supposed to be on vacation, but she is teaching a seminar. So, I mean, what else? It's How to are you fund the vacation. So. It, <laughs> I mean, it's fair, right? <laughs> so uh, the way we're going to start off today is the podcast is called Get a Grip. And my favorite question to ask people is what it means for you personally to have a grip on your life. So if you think about like having your ducks in a row or like feeling like you are in the driver's seat of your life, what does it mean for you to have a, to get a grip on your life? Oh, me. Oh, Christ. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the motto of this year has really been that I have no grip on my life at all um so it's not really doing too well for the the question of your podcast <laughs> um but like you know that's that's good in a way as well so you can watch me try mm. to get a grasp of things so that's... <laughs> no my life has been like complete chaos recently so um I wouldn't say I've got a grip of it at all um but I am trying I'm clinging on like, two little fingers get a cling Get a clay. I'm clinging on. Yeah. <laughs> Help me, <laughs> please. <laughs> this is gonna be rough, dude. How are we gonna I'm get so there? Sorry. <laughs> this is not me inspiring at all. No, this is so good, but it's like, what am I? I'm not gonna be able to breathe. You had okay, a bad so... pick of podcast podcast guest. <laughs> Look, it's not my talent. No, it's gonna be the best. Okay, so no gripping. We're clinging. However, mm. if you were, if you, I'm sorry, clutching. So you say you're wanting to get a grip on your life. If you were, if you're like, yes, okay, this is what I want things to look like. What do you feel like that looks like to you? Um, you imagine. It. I am really enjoying this period of my life, to be honest. Like the, the nothing is structured because it's been so structured for such a long time. So I am enjoying that. But uh, I, I think now I'd like to stop living out of a suitcase. Um, <laughs> like yeah. I've not uh, had any, I've not lived anywhere long term since February. Um, and even before that, I was like constantly moving um, every few months. So I would like to have my own place. That would be like my first goal. Uh, once I've got my my visa now for the US, yay! Um, but I can't actually go out there until next year because I have to like send my passport away. Obviously, I'm away right now. So once I get back, I then have to send my passport. Uh, so yeah, getting my own little place to live would be my first step, and then pretty much go from there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's a good first step. It's hard. I find for me that it's really hard to feel um, grounded if I don't have like a home base. That's like it kind of that's the baseline. It yeah, starts there. I, I feel yeah. like constantly. I don't know. Like oh, I always feel stressed. I I felt stressed for about eight months. Now. <laughs> She's not Aww. the best. No, well, man, amongst that time, you have done some pretty incredible things. So it's amazing. Like one of the questions we're going to get into later, which actually maybe we'll just start with, is when you think about the life behind the scenes of a combat athlete or a martial artist, someone who's a professional fighter in some capacity, um, what do you think goes on that kind of can affect not just your way of life, but your mental health when you're going out and winning all these tournaments, but your life behind the scenes is not quite so organized. I mean, what's going on there? You were managed to do it anyway, but it's really, really insane what people don't see. Um, I've kind of found that because it was such a stressful situation and it was very um, like the way I sort of viewed this year was and I don't recommend this by any means um, <laughs> <laughs> when I say this I'm not like you should do go blow up your life um, and then you win tournaments <laughs> yep. like I'm not recommending this I'm it's just a good saying, blueprint yeah the circumstances but pretty much like um, I, I left my previous gym I left my previous relationship I left all my friends obviously I'm still friends with these people but you know I end up having to leave home leave my friends um which was really difficult and it was very much I have nothing else to fall back on now other than 
trying to be as good as I can be this year. Mm -hmm. And it got off to a really rocky start. I missed Europeans. Um, I lost against you at Gravel Fest and then I lost <laughs> <laughs> then I lost at Pan Am in, which is in no an shame. open no in an open <laughs> match fight it was a little crazy but no, but like, yes. wait, no shame you're like you're fucking awesome but <laughs> I then lost at Pans in the final again like nothing wrong with you know I got to the final yeah. that was great but um it was just you know a really tough start especially when all the mm-hmm. other things were going on behind the scene um so yeah it was very much like I really have to make this work now because <laughs> my self-worth is in yeah. the, the bin a bit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man it sounds like I knew some of the stuff along the way but especially when you talk about like living on the road and living out of a suitcase and not having a home it's for people who haven't done that before who haven't had like a period of time where they didn't have a solid home base um mm. it's very hard to to get into your routines I mean how did you find routines like along the way are there certain things that you do all the time or you just kind of winged it uh mostly winging it again don't (laughs) recommend um but when I when I reached New York so after pans I flew straight away to New York and I was there for like two and a half months roughly um so I had like I was there for a solid period of time I was staying in an Airbnb and stuff and I was like trying to find a gym to kind of settle at mostly um, I was going between like two gyms, Essential, obviously where I train now, and uh, Marcelo's as well. So I was kind of going between the two and just kind of trying to find my feet and see where I enjoyed most. Um, yeah. So I kind of built a routine around that, but it was really difficult because like trying to get to know people, especially in a big city, is really difficult. Like everyone was lovely, but it's very much yeah. like, it's just kind of harder to connect with people. And I think maybe I was more used to, I don't know, the British and the Irish for... <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's like a really different vibe like this straight away you just like you you have something in common so you can bond the sense of humor is the same I was making jokes and people were like sorry what <laughs> which is fair <laughs> um which is fair. you know I'm like oh my god like that's so bad I, I want to kill myself as a joke and yeah, they would yeah, go yeah. oh my god don't kill yourself but I was like well I wasn't going to actually do that <laughs> but um and if I was I probably like my choice would probably not be like to tell you I wouldn't like confess. today yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, I remember, oh my God, when you won it, who's number one? And we, <laughs> I already know what it. <laughs> It's the worst. It's, it's the worst, it. but it was so good. But it's such a good example of the humor thing. Like we we're literally, so Hal and I are like about, Hal is about to interview and we're on comms and you're like, oh yeah, I'm sweating like a rapist. And I was like, <laughs> she said, what? <laughs> she said, she's sweating like who? And Hal but was like, no, 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 it's not. I'm sorry. Why are we so offended by that? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> He was like, no, 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 we say that. And I was like, who's we? Like, <laughs> it's the Welsh. It's the Welsh thing. See how well c- c- said the same thing. So, <laughs> Yeah, no, he, he vouched to you for sure. We just wasn't sure. We weren't sure if it was on broadcast, although now it's on a podcast. So I well, mean, it's, it's different. Yeah, everyone's going to know anyway. I mean, I'm not embarrassed. I mean, like, rapists do sweat, I'm sure. They don't we all. Um, <laughs> but it's, it is a common, it's like a, it's like a saying. It's a yeah. saying in Wales. Well, I can see how the New Yorkians would uh, would be a little like, hmm, interesting. They're definitely but also, by me. Anyway. But also people have like such a big, busy life going on there. And you're like literally got there and you're like trying to get everything together. And they already have like, boom, 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 boom this is how their day looks. Yeah. So I can imagine it would be uh, very difficult to try to like slot yourself in with people you're not comfortable with yet. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, should I get a coffee? And they're like, uh, I've got like, 10 things to do I feel like it's very everything's really fast paced and, and I feel very much out of place as someone from Swansea which is a very small town in Wales and everyone knows each other oh so mm. are you is that where, so next question is that where you're going back so you're planning on coming to back to the states in the beginning of the year and are you you're going to a central yeah place? yeah that's the plan yay are you teaching yes yes I am yeah I'm very excited big new plans well I'm gonna ask you about your future plans in a little bit because I want to know what you're planning on for next year if you even know that but you may not but before we go into that I really like we talked a little bit about maintaining peace and kind of like having routines which you're trying to do your best to figure out along the way (laughs) which is understandable I would say that it's it's pretty um it's you know obviously correct me if I'm wrong but I would say it's fair to say this is the biggest competition year of your career definitely the most decorated like competition year that we've seen um when you think about like the stories that you're going to tell from this time period what do you feel like you're most excited to tell your kids if you have them or friends later on like is it this time or is it a time before or what what how do you feel about it 
Um, I think this time, I feel like 27 has been a very good, like, age for me. <laughs> um, and it was really funny because I was like, when I was younger, I always saw that as the year that I would have my life figured out and like, I'd probably be married and thinking about children. I know, just, you know, you knew, like a yeah. little kid, you don't think, you think 27 is so fucking old. Now I'm like, I am a baby, yeah. I am a child. So I don't, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so funny because my life is the complete opposite to how I envisioned it in terms of like it's I'm very much single I'm very much nowhere near owning my own home I don't plan on ever having kids so it's, it's very uh, it's very different to how I would have, have thought but when I am in the old folks home um and I just fucking piss everyone off by going on about myself I'll, I'll probably tell them about this year I think this year has been really special in a lot of ways it's been very um it's had a lot of big highs and a lot of very low lows but I kind of like that it's been yeah. Like, very fun. A very fun year. Yeah. What do you think? So, going back to you being the only person, I think other than uh, Kyna Dwarch is the only other one who won ADCC and the Gi World in the same year. Um, and that's a very short list in history, right? It's a huge, huge deal. And being on the road and having all these changes in relationships and moving and all this stuff and coaching and people that you're training with, what do you think the biggest lessons are? That when you tell those stories, it's going to be like, here, do this or don't do that. Or like what you learned yourself. Um, I feel like... I spent such a long time trying to sort of mold my life around what I perceived others wanted from me. Um, like I've always mm-hmm. been such a big people pleaser. I always want to do what, if I, if you're someone in the room, I'm like, okay, I have to try and think about what they want and fig, you know, figure out what they want and, and sort of act accordingly. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I, I can, without sort of realizing it, well, it's definitely not a purposeful thing. I'll definitely sort of try and reflect back what people want to see from me a lot of the time I've always struggled a lot with fitting in and I think Mm. like for me this year was really much about sort of finally just living my living my truth (laughs) I don't mean I don't know what the fuck that means but um just sort of trying to be as true to myself as (laughs) possible living for yourself um and just go for the things that I want and, and not be afraid to do it like I put so many things off for such a long time chips which i want to say for people who maybe are not super familiar with those um following the high level competitors that most people do not even compete in the gi world and adcc in the same year like for example me like i was not gonna have the balls to to try to do both in the same year i was like really just focused on one because it's such a different style of fighting so it's a very very big deal the only other person i know of that did it this year is kind of Dwarch. so winning both of those back to back what realizations do you feel like you've had um, along the way and what what have you learned uh, trying to you know mold your life around accomplishing that um yeah it was definitely very tough and I really did consider only doing one because of the reasons you said like it's really hard to do both um but mm-hmm. then I kind of thought like I do have a style that kind of kind of interchanges a lot like um the way I like passing isn't too reliant on grip so I was like you know I'm gonna go for it I don't have much time um it sounds really stupid like I'm 27 which is not so old young. it's not old yeah. by any means but no. there's so many people like this fucking 18 year olds winning this shit now mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um, it's I'm, a lot of pressure I'm afraid of these little babies coming through who are gonna fuck me up so I I do feel yeah. like I started this late um, like I come, come from a judo background um, but I did start jiu-jitsu fairly late like there's people who have been black belt longer than I've been training jiu-jitsu so I'm just playing catch up to be honest so um, mm. I was like well I kind of felt like this pressure to do both but I did definitely mm. consider only picking one um, mm. and it's very understandable now I feel like it is getting to a point where I'll probably have to select one to compete in at the very least and it'll probably right. have to be nogi because the nogi scene is what's growing more unfortunately (laughs) (laughs) well man that leads me to to a good question um actually when thinking about the opportunities as far as what's growing I want to talk a little bit about I know we've had a lot going on social media lately about women competing in jiu-jitsu and cards having women or not having women on and um as far as what's growing I've had the same experience feeling like the financial opportunities are more in no gi and also just as far as the fan base goes and what people want to see um what would you say to somebody who asks the question like why do we need to see more women on cards or or what what's the importance there um like for me I, like I, you know, there's a lot of thing online. That was me, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> being the classic annoying feminist as uh, usual. Um, but you know, I shall happily take on that role. Uh, <laughs> I say a lot of promoters hate me now. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You're in a good position to do the com- to do the complaining or the I don't even like the word complaining. It sounds negative, but like the the conversation starting or the being loud about it or speaking up because you are the best, right? And so like you're one of the only people who can do that and really feel like, yeah, well, I'm still going to be on the best cards because <laughs> because I'm the best athlete. So I know you won't say that, but that's definitely like I think from a, a management standpoint, it's looking at like, yeah, well, you know, she pulls the numbers. She's one of the best people to have on. So we sometimes at that point, like, it's a, it's a, it can be a heavy burden to wear, but you are the person that has a lot of voice in that conversation. So it's pretty powerful. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I do think, you know, that that sort of, um, it's, it's short lived, right? So like, it's, it's unlikely or I, you know, I don't want to say it's unlikely, but it, it probably is to, to try, you know, win both in the same year again, um, or to have the level of success I'm having right now. It's, you know, it's going to be short lived, whether it's a few years, a few months, or this is it now. Um, so I really thought that, you know, while I have this sort of, I don't know, I have the cards in my favor, right? Like I kind of have a little bit of pull at the, at the very least. Because yeah. I can always yeah. say, well, I won ADCC. You must. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know um, what? As women, I feel like it's really hard to feel like you can say those things. But you know the men are not shying away from saying that. They are saying those things. So it's yeah. like, yeah, that's extremely valid. You know, like I, I just feel like this is my opportunity to be able to to sort of push it a little bit more um and I do sort of take that responsibility seriously as well because you know I I don't think it's acceptable the amount of divisions that are at ADCC I don't want to take the excuse of oh well it's not you know it's not up to me like I understand it's not up to you but I feel like that can't just be like you can't just say that with no explanation um I don't think one extra division is enough I think there should at the very least be two I don't think we should settle for one I feel like we should push for more I don't think Mm. think it's acceptable to have no women on your card like that's embarrassing how are you not embarrassed when there's a slideshow showing you illustrating to you that there's Mm -hmm. no women on your card that's quite that's outright discrimination whether you like it or not like you are discriminating against women when you do that and you can say that you're not all day but the facts are there in front of you you are literally discriminating um and I don't think I, I don't want to be, you know, I understand these are these people aren't evil. These people are bad people by any means. Yeah. It's more, in my opinion, it's just thoughtlessness. You're right. just thoughtless. An irresponsible level though, right? Yes. Like an irresponsible level of thought. So that, that's, a, I think, the perfect way to describe it. Mm. Like it's not, it's not done with any um, malice at all, but it, it, it's, it's effect is, is really damaging. And I really do think the hands are in, like, sorry, the, the responsibility is in the hands of the promoters now because yeah. I, I I don't like this that, oh, well, the women just have to sort of keep showing us why they should be on their car. Like, no, 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 I don't have to fucking show you anything. Like, I'm like I'm good enough as is. Um, I'm right. excited. I'm continuously, I continue, not just me, like I just mean women in general, but, you know, like I, I fight for submission every time I'm on a card. I pull in good numbers. I, I'm told that I'm an, an exciting fighter to watch. So why do I have to keep proving to you what, that I've done enough? Like, well, it's, do you mean? You ha- you, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've done and enough. In, right, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, the thing about all the women that have come before us that also, like, have been paving the way and fighting and building, and it's it's never been a popular conversation. Like, now I'd say it's the most acceptable that it's been, especially with social media, but yeah. especially before the women who were doing it. It was never a popular conversation to be the one because you are pointed out and said, like, yeah, well, you know, like, you're complaining, just do better. You know, yeah. like, if you want it, like, if it, if if it was deserved, like it, it, that's how it would be. But I think one thing that you and I have talked about before that's really important that you're pointing out right now is like the responsibility is, is cyclical, right? There has to be like for fans to care about the women, there has, well, you know, at an emotional level for them to be very, very invested, there has to be media about them so they can get to know who they are. Right. So then if there's media about them, then man, now like, the, they're tuning in to watch, they're buying tickets, they're showing up, they're tuning in at that time, they're doing the pay-per-views, whatever, and they're checking out. And then the women's responsibility is to show up, put on a good show, be, you know, try to do well in the media mm-hmm. sector, like be good performers, and then the cycle continues. And it, But they, it can't just be one side. It's got to be dually supported for that yeah. ecosystem to thrive. Because you're such a good example of this as well. Like you promote yourself so well on social media, you really show people who you are. You have a storyline that you can follow, right? Because that's what people want to take like that's what people like watching is a storyline but none of the women have you know you can give yourself a storyline on on social media but that's like one tiny piece of it they're not giving all these other women who maybe aren't as good at social media 
Right. The and you know we should all try and be better on it. Right? Like I'm fucking awful at it, but <laughs> you're but great at it. I, I no, try. you are good. You are. You are. But, the, but it's one yeah, piece. It's one piece. Is, and is they, what you're they, saying. Like for example, ADCC, they they had the lead up for the men's divisions. Like this, you know, this nice. What was it called? It had like a title to it. Um, uh, but it was like this thing on like flow graph. Captain. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. it was like the lead up to ADCC, showing each division. Yeah. It was all the men's division. Oh, road to ADCC. The road ADCC. Fuck yeah. me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was no road <laughs> for, for me. There was no road for you. Right. None of the women got right. anything like that. So how can you expect people to be excited about the division when you're telling them not to be excited? You, mm. as the media and as promoters or whatever, you know, this is lots of people, not just one. This is not just one show. Yeah. This is not just one um, media outlet. This is all of them for the most part, right? right? Um, right. You, you're you making a choice not to promote women's jiu-jitsu because you don't think it brings in enough enough numbers. So you are keeping mm. us in this cycle, but like you're, you're sending the message yourself that it's not good enough to watch. Um, right. And, yeah. and well, what's really interesting that's, that's valuable to understand this conversation that I try to bring up as often as possible is knowing that now that I've had the opportunity to work behind the scenes a lot in different organizations and talk to a lot of people that uh, are in charge of the numbers, they're looking at the data. What a lot of people will tell you is the same thing is that actually, you know, the numbers for men and women, as far as people who are tuning in to watch or ticket sales, right, um, are actually almost exactly the same regardless of gender. It really has to do with quality of competitors yeah. and their accolades and social media is a big part of it who's pushing sales, things of that nature. So, you know, that sounds like common sense to the women who have been saying they want to be on these cards, but to a lot of people, the argument has always been, well, it's a business. And yes, it is a business, right? We would never say like, oh, we'll just put only women on the card if they don't sell tickets. Like, no one's going to make money that way. The, but the fact of the matter is that we do sell, right? But yeah. you can only prove that if given the opportunity. Oh, there's plenty like we do sell. like there's plenty of men who, who say that they love watching my jiu-jitsu who, there's plenty of men who say the yeah. same about yourself but lots of the athletes if you look at mma is a great example like in the ufc as far as i can tell like maybe this is you know just an outsider perspective but they promote it equally and therefore people watch it equally you know I mean? there's there's more men right. in the sport right, right. it's a male dominated sport yeah. but and they say you know mostly men watch because it's mostly men who train however right me, like i watch men all the time are you telling me yeah. that guys can't watch women? What, like, what's this weird rule? <laughs> like, there's plenty of men who watch me, and that yeah. they, there's nothing. Like, yeah. they're just like, I don't care. Well, like, look at our whatever. look at our Instagram like stats, right? Like, yeah, the, yeah, right, yeah. Like, if you, <laughs> what's men. the percentage of fans? Mm -hmm. Oh my, yeah. And I think it's important to say, like, who you know, we're not saying put the card up 50 50 as if there's 50 percent male competitors and 50 percent women competitors, but it's like let's put something up proportional as far as sports jiu jitsu. Yeah. Like, let's look. It, like at least put something up proportional that reflects the ratios not just of overall competitors because i don't think that's fair either but professional yeah. competitors people who are you know going to adcc trials just for example that's also like a you could argue with that number but just to pull some kind of number right people who would argue that they had a shot to be on who's number one or polaris or one of the bigger on uh, the bigger shows if you took that number and you put up like proportionally what the card should look like and what's going to pull in money. Like, that's what people are asking. They're not saying put it 50-50. No. Like, people point at that and they're like, oh, well, don't, you're asking, don't be ridiculous. And it's like, well, that's a far extreme that most people are not even talking this about. Is, that's what's so funny, right? People are like, how can you justify having 50-50 on a card? How can you ask for that? It's like, <laughs> if you read what I fucking said, sorry, I need to stop swearing. <laughs> I never asked for 50-50. No, I like I'm it. I'm telling you, there's no women fights on this card. None, zero. Right. And you're telling me, but that like what I'm asking for one fucking match on a main card. Yeah. And there's none. Right? Like yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's not the same. And thing. it's wild. After that, after that I um after the stuff that's happened recently, I reached out or actually people reached out to me and asked me my opinion on it. And then I also talked to a couple different kinds of different organizations because there were a lot of events going on at the same time. And uh, it started some really good conversations. And so sometimes it is hard to be the one. I just want to commend you. Like it is hard to be the one that may have their finger pointed at them or may make enemies, especially as an athlete. It's very hard to want to speak up about these things because we do rely on the organizers and the media for a lot, you know, with our brand and with being in with our, for our paycheck really yeah. at the end of the day. So it's a big deal. And, but your, your conversations started a lot of other micro conversations that I was involved in. So I know that there's tons of conversations that I'm not privy to that probably also came as a result. So, um, even though it's uncomfortable to do, or it can, you know, put you at odds in different ways, it's, it's a really big deal. The way I sort of saw it though, was like, 
I'll never be invited on Polaris again. Like, that's fine. I understand that now. I've never been invited on. Fine. Um, but there's been, I've had not just with them, but with many organized. I'm not just pointing at them, but because I, I don't I do feel bad that they did have such a pile on effect from it because mm. and then other shows were hopping on that bandwagon. And I will not name mm. who it is, but certain shows who are hopping <laughs> on there don't pay fuck all. So I'm like, OK, you have right. women on your show, but you don't pay them. That's a different right. that's a different issue. So, and I'll tell you what, Pol- mm. Polaris are very good for paying. However, I've had lots of behind, you know, people are like, oh, well, what are you really doing? You're just moaning on the internet. It's like, I've had lots of behind the scenes conversations where I've had to beg right. for certain pay. Like, I was getting paid like 200 pounds once on a show. Um, <laughs> so I mean, and, and I had to beg to be paid properly. And then I had to beg several times for main event because this fight should be main event. And I was told, no, it shouldn't be, even though I was like, well, we have several more accolades than everyone else on this card. Why is it not main event? And no one wanted right. to say it's because you got a vagina, but that was the reason. So like, there's lots of behind the scenes yeah. conversations that like I am trying really hard, and, and <laughs> lots of people are. It's not like I put one, yeah. you know, that post doesn't come from nowhere. It's not like I was like, you know what, I want to just be a bitch today. Um, right. I mean, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, I do want to be a bitch, but you know, there's lots of things that build up to that reaction. Yeah, man, it's crazy. I, I know we've talked about this too. We both have had multiple. I've definitely had multiple conversations with promoters on different shows about like hey why is this the main event and not me and this other person when if you look at accolades you look at social media like any metric that you could use to try to measure like who should be the main event yeah like she and I are way higher so like what's going on there are you just like homies with this dude or you do like what you know what's going on and there's different answers every time but it usually kind of comes down to like it was either like more convenient or a thoughtlessness or or they just totally blow you off and they're like you're complaining for no reason and that's another thing because i was sort of like you know there's there's two reasonings for for main card usually right it is accolades um and social or following or social media following is a good indicator of how many or what's for a title yes exactly right, yeah or for yeah yeah so mm-hmm. you've got like those two things social media following and accolades and i was like well i've got more accolades and i've got more social media following so tell me why it's not main mm-hmm. event and I, i'm not trying to be a, a bitch here but i just i just genuinely want to know and we know why right because right. they're perceiving right. that they're deciding before they've given the fans the opportunity to decide that people won't tune into it as much as this man this man fight <laughs> Which sounds really funny to say, um, even though they've got way less following, therefore technically less fans, right? And they don't have the same accolades. But you, you just decided before you let the fans right. have a, ch- a chance to decide that they wouldn't tune in when that's not true. Like it's like you're not giving men credit. You're, you're assuming oh, these men yeah. can't watch the sight. <laughs> it's like women fighting on the ground. Like God. Like whereas like most men I talk to are like, no, I'd happily watch women. Like I don't understand. They like they they yeah. They're like I'll watch women all day. I don't I don't get what's going. on. I don't know who. Why do people who run events yeah. just all seem to think the same way? <laughs> it's so weird. No, it's it's strange, and you know it is really sad because I think it needs to be as you know it feels like one of those things you have to be really careful to say over and over. Like I promise, it's not just a complaint. Like I really just care, but it, that is so ingrained so that you're not having the finger pointed at you. But it but it's also the truth. Like I don't think a lot of these people are bad people. It's just it's kind of societally the way that we think about sports in general. It's misogyny and, ingrained in you. That's, yes. And that's okay. Yes. I'm a little bit misogynistic too. It's been ingrained in me. I'm trying to reverse it, but like we've all got our own shit, do you know I mean? Um, yes. But that is what it is. And we have to call it what it is. It's misogyny. It's discrimination. Mm-hmm. Like call it what it is. Not like, oh, you know, like no point tip toeing around it because you've got to name it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't yeah, mean I'm above so anything. Like- I've got a lot of shit I need to work out and I need to do better with. But like people can call me out on that no, but- as well. It's true. Like using that word discrimination is I think is really important. Like just putting a name to it. Um, and then there, I think there are organizations that are working really behind. Like one of the things that I'm really excited about is being behind the scenes of some things um, at this time. So especially with my injury, I just have more time to work on those kinds of things. And I'm being able to have those conversations with promoters and matchmakers and things. And I'm like, hey, you, you got you have women on the card, right? Or hey, that card that's coming up, like how many how many women's matches are on there? So yeah. it's nice to see that the the response now was like, yeah, of course, rather than like, oh, well, like maybe if we can find someone for free. You know? <laughs> this is the thing as well. So, the saying we can't find the women. You know why you can't find the women? Because you don't you offer them half the pay. And not and this is not talking about yeah. a certain organization. 
I mean, yeah. as a generalization, a lot of businesses decide to do this. I'm not saying certain yeah. ones that we were talking about earlier. I'm just saying there are a lot yeah. that will decide to not pay or underpay. And that is why you can't find those women because you're refusing to pay professional athletes to be on your shows. Right. And one thing I, that I think is really important, especially for like the younger athletes coming up, is that I think you and I are both on the same ta- on the same page about taking it pretty seriously with the precedent that we're setting. Yeah. Because if we're having women um, taking matches like that are black belt, high level, highly accomplished women that are taking matches for five hundred dollars, how are we going to ask? for anything close to what we should be getting paid or you know the word should is is hard to use and people don't like that word but if you just look comparatively at the men that have similar accolades to you and I or to you um and in similar social media things of that nature if you're looking at like what we're pulling in the value that we're bringing how are we supposed to ask for those numbers if other people are taking you know like such a low percentage in comparison so then it's hard because then you have to be the bad guy to say no Because, but really, you're not only protecting yourself, you're really raising the standards for everybody. Because if I'm getting paid more, you're going to get paid more. And there is room for all of us. We don't have, need to have this space of like scarcity of like, oh, well, I have to take this fight because, I mean, the problem is that does get created yeah. because then there's only one match on the card and you're like, well, fuck, I got to take this fight because if I don't, then someone's going to do it for cheaper or they're going to do it for this much and they're not going to have me on. Then how am I going to get exposure to build my brand? How am I going to get coverage? How am I going to get good mat experience, these titles? Uh, or maybe I just need to pay my bill. So maybe I do take this low amount. And the organizations have such a position of power to be able to do that because they're aware of that scarcity. And that I think is really where it's important that we are not accepting those numbers to help kind of raise the standards. Yeah, no, that's such a good point. I remember one of the best bits of advice I ever had or like sort of perspective I was given was by Livia Giles. Um, she was like, don't chart, like she said, we were talking about seminar fees and she was like, if you undervalue yourself, if you set a low price, you are setting a low price for the next girl who comes through because you've set the precedent here. So she now can't charge mm-hmm. much because people will say, well, Fiona only charges this and she's one this, this and this. So it means the next person right. coming through now can't charge much. And that applies to men as well. Like, I know lots of guys, especially in the UK, who severely undervalue yeah. themselves. Um, and But, the, you know, it has that trickle-down effect for everyone then, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's like that for me was the best way. Because I was like, oh, well, I can't charge this because of this. And I was like, well, no, I have to think about who's coming up next and, and making sure they can charge right. a fair price. And I think a big part of that that really affected me and worried me about not you know, I didn't want to be difficult. And I remember hearing um, mm-hmm. event promoters um, bitching about Mackenzie Dern's price, right? And like this, you know, oh. at the height of her career, you know, she, she's still, well, she's still at the height of her career, but you know, in jiu-jitsu. Different, different yeah, career, in but jiu-jitsu yeah. career. And I was like, oh, and I was like, well, you know, my logical brain was like, well, Mackenzie Dern is Mackenzie Dern. She was the biggest draw. Like, she's got right. such like X factor, right? Like she's got the it factor. Yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, but shouldn't she be, asking for that much and then you know but at the time I was hearing that it made me think oh well I best not be difficult because then people will talk badly about me whereas now I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people talking badly about me um and probably think I'm very demanding (laughs) but I've I've worked too hard to take pennies yeah and it's like when I ask for loads and also you're not but if a guy asks for loads he's a boss do you mean like what am I meant to do yeah I literally just put a <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. But also it's true, like like just for the listeners, like she what you ask for is is less than the men make. Know, like so what you were nothing. asking to be paid is still not even even with the best guys. And you literally, like I just said, just accomplished something this year that no one other than Kynan did. Like you you've won it all. Like there's nothing more that you can do. And your social media shows, your ticket, like your your number shows, and you still ask for lower amounts than like what your val- what your perceived value would be. So when you're talking about being difficult, I mean, like, I think it's important for people to understand, like, you're not going in <laughs> asking for anything awful. crazy. <laughs> no, it was really funny. Like, I got asked and- to do a camp recently and the guy was like, what's your, what's your price? And I was like, oh, well, like, and the, the camp was like with people who I really admire. And I was like, oh my God, like, I just want to do the camp, but I'll do it for free. But I didn't say that. I was yeah, like, this yeah. is my price. And <laughs> And I, I sent it to them and then he was like, um, and he, he, he added more money to it. And I was like, how about I give you this? And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was wow. like, I really undervalued myself there. Yeah, thank you. But it was such guy, like, yeah, though. really nice of him to um, <laughs> be like, you are stupid. <laughs> Not take your naive, uh, na- naivete for, for Most advantage. Most people don't Not do that, but I really appreciated that he was literally yeah. just like, how about I give you this instead? You fucking Aww. idiot. <laughs> 
man it's it's so crazy you know what i always say i think the biggest issue is with pei and jiu-jitsu is the secrecy people don't talk about it it's so taboo yeah. they don't want to say man i remember when i first did my first super fight ever like as a black belt like big girl super fight on a big show and the main i was the main event uh for the very first time and i literally went and asked a bunch of people like hey i have no idea like what i'm supposed to charge or how people wouldn't tell me like and these are people i've known since i was a kid they wouldn't hey, tell me fuckers. like that that's crazy <laughs> Well, they just kept saying like, oh, ask for more. Like, oh, that's not enough. How but they wouldn't more? give me, I'm like, look, I'm not, I'm not telling you to like send me receipts of what you've always been paid or like, I'm going to quote yeah. you, but I just have no idea. I didn't come up under a big, like crazy world champion as my head instructor. I don't know. So I actually outsourced. What's funny about this conversation is, is, uh, <laughs> obviously this is like a totally different direction, but Gordon, he posts a bunch of crazy stuff online, man. I'm telling you. That guy, I don't even know him that well, but I'm telling you, he was one of the first people in the beginning of my career. I reached out and asked him for help. Like, hey, what the heck am I supposed to even get paid? And he just like spilled. Like he just was like, do this, do this, don't do that. I, uh, say, ask for this on this. And it changed my career because it made me start asking for like big boy yeah. prices. And then it like, uh, companies and organizations and people having me on their cards they started to take me seriously because it was like yeah no you you can't pay like you're not gonna fool me my you take yourself bitches, seriously but, so but, they take you seriously and yeah I mean, like it's, right. and i'm saying this as someone who does yeah. not take themselves seriously <laughs> <laughs> you're doing I'm a doing good better. you're doing a better job though. you're doing like good yourself like telling me what you know being transparent with me and i'm sure fucking organizers love to hear this um but you know i think that is important like i'm happily like anyone ever anyone listens to this and they ever want to know i will i will tell you because you know yeah, in terms of sponsorships same. of everything i will be honest because why is there secrecy here like i understand it's uncomfortable so people don't yeah. talk about money um but i don't come from any money so i'm happily <laughs> i am happy to tell you i'm like this is what i make now <laughs> which is like well, and it's also, it's also like th there's a line. You're not going to, like, of course, and I know what you're saying, but just to clarify for listeners, I'm not going to sit down and be like, oh, on this date, this person no. offered me this much for this exact thing and go make that public. Because that's, yeah, because <laughs> that's disrespectful. And it's also like you can, yeah, that's not super cool. But giving transparency as far as like ballparks and like what I ask for and what my prices are, that needs to happen more. My DMs are always open. I talk to any pro athletes that I can or up and coming athletes that I can about this because they need to know. Otherwise, how do you plan your life? How are you going to decide how to pay your rent? Like if you don't know what the heck yeah. you're going to be making, you know, like, like um, like my sponsor, like progress, <laughs> my, my gi and my kit sponsor. I didn't know that you could get paid by sponsors, which is stupid because sponsorship is getting paid. It's not getting free kit. I didn't know that you could get paid. And then they were like, we're going to pay you now. And I was like, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> they were like yes that is a thing so they were always like i've been really oh lucky that some people have just sort of looked at me and been like you're a fucking idiot like and they just felt bad essentially and were like we should pay. oh my god or they saw your value and that. They but i think they definitely they definitely saw the value and they were like okay well we were gonna pay you and i really appreciated that yeah. so i've been very lucky that um i've had people like that to sort of <laughs> be honest and, yeah. and you know Sort of let me know that that was a thing yeah well it's good i mean it's crazy like most in professional sports their their contracts are public information right so i think the more that we can do that like especially since we don't know, all don't have professional managers that's a whole nother conversation but especially since most of us are not with management companies if we're managing ourselves or we have a little bit of assistance from a coach or something like that there needs to be more transparency so um i want to shift gears a little bit because we i want to get into a oh, couple yeah. other things but i think that will be really <laughs> no it's great i think that'll be really valuable to people and now people know that you're you and i have our dms open Although only the very particular conversation. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not some fucking strange photos, please. DM, DM's closed for a lot of other things, <laughs> especially both <laughs> of us. <laughs> all right, so, <laughs> um, all right, so moving on, I want to talk about. Um, we're gonna get real deep. I want to talk about darkness, and the reason I start the start, oh, fuck me. <laughs> start the <laughs> start the phrase off with that because there's two major questions. It's like. One, what is a really dark moment in your life and what did you learn through that time period? But the second part of that, and it may be the same, is what was a memory or time in your life which felt dark but led to the most light, right? So maybe they're the same or different, but like lessons learned from a dark moment and and what brought it into the light that you look back on, you're like, man, I'm really glad that happened. Ooh. The thing that's come up for me <laughs> is very personal, <laughs> but I'm I don't, Oh, no, you don't no, have it's to okay. share. Like, I'll be as, as vague as possible. Well, no, I won't be vague at all. Yeah. I can't be vague. But um, I think one of the worst <laughs> times in my life was before I moved to Ireland. 
um mm. I was in like a very I don't know if everyone says toxic relationship but it was like I look back yeah. at it as we're not, we're not to be too dramatic but it really felt like it was quite emotionally abusive you know like no, no, I think back yeah. to it I'm like wow that was strange from what I know it was that's not a dramatic explanation at the, all the, <laughs> yeah that's very accurate yeah I would call that I very felt accurate like, I, I felt like I was this crazy person for such a long time um mm. and it was you know it was it was definitely described it was very dark and and then I think when I then moved to Ireland and I got into a really wonderful relationship that I unlearned lots of really awful things you know like you know like that is not normal for you to yeah. you know why aren't you screaming at me? Why aren't you super jealous? Why are you not trying to break up with me before a tournament? I'm really confused. <laughs> Why are you so nice to me? Um, <laughs> you know, like, you know, just a ba- you know, you get to get bad luck. Like, I think sometimes I've got amazing parents, but somehow like you just get, someone comes across to you. It and, happens. Yeah. You just get fucking yeah. shitty luck. Well, also dark, I want to say about you in particular, and I can recognize this in you because the same thing happened to me. Dark spirits, I think a lot of time gravitate toward like bright, shiny women or men or the other Mm. way around. But like you are a very like bright, shiny star. And so it's easy to be like, oh, give me that. But then they get like intimidated by that. So they're like, I like this bright, shiny thing, but like only for me. And I need to make sure you're not too shiny for everyone else. Yeah, I wonder so if it was I'd like, like to think it was that. Could... I don't know if it was maybe my confidence. Yeah. Was, you know, I was very shy as a teenager. And I think that mm. that was maybe taken advantage of, that I was very shy and I didn't have any close friends at the time. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think there was maybe a little bit of like, you know, like it was, I mean, you know, I think men and women can relate to this, you know, I was having like competition success and then sort of trying to dim that or, or trying to mess, you know, uh, yeah. things like I'd be coming up to a tournament and, and would purposely like start an argument or try to say, Oh, I think we should break up like <laughs> the night before to sort of make me upset and, and ruin that trip. Yeah. yeah and like, yeah. and really ruin it for me or like just send crazy messages uh, around it just to sort of freak mm. me out or afterwards as well. If I'd won, try and ruin it so I couldn't enjoy, um, so, but like yeah. from that meant that I then left Wales, I moved to Ireland and, you know, made my closest friends in the world, like who I'm still so close to now, even though I've moved um, and just had the best, yeah. like 23, from 23 to 20, almost 26, yeah, 26 before COVID, some of the happiest years of my yeah. life. And like, I had such great memories there. So, um, it, you know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have left Wales if it wasn't for that fucking relationship. So I'm really wow. grateful to it now. And yeah, there we are. <laughs> Over shit. Mm. Yeah. No, it's, 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 I think it's valuable. It's so, I, so one thing, it's funny because we're obviously friends now, but I've always been a Fiona fan. Thank I've you. always loved watching you. And even, <laughs> even as someone who feels that we're in a very similar um, time in our time periods in our, in our careers, even then, I think when we look at people who are really successful or they're doing great things or they look really happy, like sometimes it's easy to to just imagine that they don't go through these kinds of hardships or they don't have these things going on, especially because we don't publicize it. And that's for many reasons. And obviously, like you want to have your own personal stuff to yourself. And that's, you know, very <laughs> valid. <laughs> but, you know, so it's, we're not responsible to share everything. But it's important that people look around and know that it's possible to be you, like not to be you. Well, no, it could be Fionn, but that it's possible to do what you're doing and to be as happy as you are and to be living the life that you have with all of this stuff in your past. And I mean, arguably, like you just said, because of it, really. And so people are going through these kinds of things or they're uh, and they're imagining that your life looks one way and maybe they don't feel like they can they can achieve that because of what's going on with them. Little do they know that the same stuff has been going on in your life or that you're dealing with it now or that you've dealt with it in the past. So I think hearing that is really, really powerful for people coming. Yeah. Out. Like that's, yeah, I hope, I hope so. Cause like, I feel like, I think everyone's been in that sort of, or something similar, maybe not everyone, but oh, you got lucky, <laughs> but um, we've all been you know, convicted <laughs> a little bit in being sort of in a situation like that. Yeah. I mean, I've been very weak it, I've been a very weak person at certain points in my life as well in terms of like, and I don't mean that as like, oh, weak, like, you know, in a perfect, I just mean like, you know, I've not stood up for things or like, you know, in that period of my life, I was like a person I don't even recognize. I wasn't a good friend, which hence having no close friends. Like I do put that down to the situation I was in as well. um, That I was sort of isolated from from people, but I, I definitely didn't behave in ways that I'm very proud of. 
as well in that period and and mm. I do put that down to the environment as well um and I feel like yeah like when I moved I came became such a better person in general like I, I was like wow like I didn't realize I could be funny or I could be fun to be around <laughs> I mean like I remember um yeah yeah light. like when I yeah. again oversharing and I don't, I don't mean to overshare but someone as well I don't know if they'd be comfortable but when I with my ex my most recent ex who like we're still friends now with Marcus um who you know um but you know he yeah. was like, I didn't realize that <laughs> you great. were like this fun like and I was like because like, I'd go on trips away because I was <laughs> under east coast when I was with my oh god this is very confusing now my ex ex mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> um the Welsh like the whales the like whales beyond yeah to be friendly with people in case he would get jealous or he, even though he wasn't right. there you know um right. and he was like I didn't realize you were this fun and I was like oh I have a personality I just keep it hidden <laughs> so yeah like I think that was you know it really brought me out of my shell it gave me a lot of confidence then moving to Ireland and like totally changed my life so yeah man and now here you are this big media personality <laughs> no dude you know what's <laughs> you know it's so funny as I was talking oh, to someone God. the other day and we were talking about how athletes promote themselves and how they they kind of gain traction and they can do better um as far as competing or like being on big shows because they can grow their social they have a an mm-hmm. it factor right and people always say about you it's like well fiance funny like she's so funny, like she's so fun to watch. And it's like you just have this sense of like lightness about being able to just kind of be your true self. Like and maybe, you know, obviously we all are a little bit different on and off camera, but for the most part, I think it's so fun to be able to watch you because it does feel like you can like even even just as me from my own experience, I feel like I connect with you when I see you on on different shows or in interviews. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Like she she's like I, I see her. I'm like, you know, crying. it's it's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I mean it's it's amazing and and again just for the people out there listening like anybody who comes up in these kinds of and they have these these shiny things or these great accomplishments or their life looks a certain way I would argue that it's not usually in spite of these things it's a lot of times because of these things in a lot of ways like you said so much changed after yeah. that so I think it's really um and, and honestly you know what's interesting is I think a lot of female jiu-jitsu like professional jiu-jitsu athletes I hear very similar stories with like toxic relationships or in narcissistic relationships emotional physical like sexual abuse like it's a it's a very very common theme and I, that brings me to one other topic that I did want like it's a very touchy subject but it's something that just came up so recently last year in the jiu-jitsu community um why why are we still having such a big problem with um, with sexual abuse and harassment in the jiu-jitsu community? Like I, that's I know like a big jump to something else, but it's something that is pretty um, pretty ugly and it's it's hard to ignore. At this yeah, point. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't tell you why other than that. I feel like people in positions of power, well, men in positions of power, um, I, I you know, so I feel like sometimes they gravitate towards these positions of power because of what it gives them over people. That sort of leverage over people. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's definitely really disturbing to see. And also it's, it, you know, it's hard to be at certain events and then see people who are either yeah. connected to or are perpetrators themselves just celebrated and being a part of it. Yeah. Um, that can be really difficult. And I, well, I mean, I'm saying that as someone who's just, who's just, you know, not involved, um, so I can't imagine what the victim right. would then feel like, or, you, you know, using the name of a technique still after a certain right. perpetrator, or I don't know what to call them, <laughs> fucking rapist. Um, can we rename that guard? Can we rename it? Like, I like that guard. Can we call it outside hook guard instead? I don't know. Um, so I can't imagine to be the actual victim, how that would feel. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite hard. Like, you know, for myself, like, uh, one instance I was well it's different it's not jujitsu it's it's judo and I obviously have to be kind of careful of what I say because I I don't know can I get something for like libel or something I don't know Uh, (laughs) fucking if there's a lawyer let me know um but you know my my, as a child my my judo coach was a was a pedophile and he was convicted and sent to prison um Mm. but then also like there was yeah it was just the the reaction from the community was also not not the best so very much trying to hush it up hush it up um yeah, so I mean, it's it seems like it's super common. Everyone's got a sort of story where they either unfortunately were the victim yeah. themselves, or you know, were just close enough to, is in their in their circle to be close enough to it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, why is it that literally every time women in jiu-jitsu get together at the high, and we're talking about the highest levels of competitors, and you and I can both attest to this, the two top things that we talk about are the two top things we talked about today, not being represented on cards or not being paid properly, and then also sexual abuse and harassment stories and or domestic yeah. violence stories. And it's like, these are the two things that women, female competitors get together, and it's like, we we don't we're not usually with all of each other all the time and it's like we have this let's in common. share these stories and see if there's some yeah oh my god who, that's trauma who's bond you want to trauma bond with me? You. Let's... oh same yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what married guy with kids oh, were sending you cool. pictures <laughs> like tell me about it i think there's one thing that says this in the uk community obviously because sila in the background um you can attest to this yeah. but i think is it okay for me to name i don't know if it's fine yeah jackson sees it yeah, uh, yeah. too late um it. yeah <laughs> but it was like it was like a rite of passage you get your blue belt and you get a jackson Souza dm oh and it was like a joke but like oh, you know God. it was never as far as like i'd heard it was never thing anything past like oh hit me up or like fucking here's my penis dream which yeah. is obviously super fucking weird but yeah, yeah you know you're allowed to slide into a dm but what was weird like I, i'd right. get like these types of DM. I actually never got a Jackson's as a DM. I know. Wow. I'm like, I was a bit insulted. Wow. Excluded <laughs> from the club. <laughs> Not that I wanted him. I don't want one, but you know, I was a bit like, what? I'm ugly. <laughs> maybe, maybe he got a message from your ex first. Perhaps, so he was yeah, put off. I mean, yeah. If I got <laughs> a preemptive. message, I get fucking. <laughs> I get told off if I got messaged. I, was I like, feel oh, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> poor thing. <laughs> At, relatable, relatable. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so you never got one. Well, what's but... funny now is like I would get like you know the occasion like creepy DM, um, and like you know from some yeah. prominent people sometimes. And what was more disturbing, mm. I think, was that when I reached black belt and got ac- certain accolades and got known in the community, they stopped way less, less. or not mm. bold ones, just more like polite nice ones which yeah. you think oh that sounds like no 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 no, it's be- because you mm-hmm. know why it's because they think oh well i can't be a fucking creature to her because she can yeah the power the pa- we're on the same gone. play i can call yeah. you out i can go so and so just sent me his dick and then put yeah. up my story do you mean there's power there so um although it's a yeah. nice filter system uh it's also really disturbing because like then i hear from friends who are like it lower is. belts the sort of what kind of conversation they've had with certain people and I'm like that's wildly different from my experience and I know why like it's the power dynamic yeah Yeah, it that's yeah that's such a good illustration of what goes on because you ask the question like oh well maybe just maybe just love happens in in the jiu-jitsu on the mats all the time because of what we do why is it always the white belts then why are all the black belts Freshly falling in love with all the white belts if it's just because people just, just fell in love, love with jiu-jitsu and like oh my god yeah. he's so cool he's so talented teach me <laughs> yeah but i don't want and you to look, teach me i mean the outlier like i <laughs> fuck off i'll teach you <laughs> Like, <laughs> well and i hate the i i hate the idea that someone out there is listening is gonna be like well i was yeah. the one and we did look okay it happens it happens but that's not what we're talking about just to be super clear like if you have a healthy relationship and you're whatever by all means but that is not the common that's not the common thing like where it's the the power differential is so so frightening because you also gotta think that like that usually means not only is there an experience level that's a different in jiu-jitsu, but there also is usually a mm. huge age gap too. And that's where we see a lot of like, you talk about, okay, she's legal 18, 19, 20, but man, okay, what is she doing? Like walking in and she's going to start like dating this 45 year old black belt and they don't really have anything in common. And he is like new to the country. Like, okay. You know, like let's, the, that is not the, the norm as far as really, it doesn't make it acceptable just because it's yeah. legal. Then you have all the legal situations, like all the stuff that happened with fight sports last year. I was really outspoken on social media about that. That was a huge thing that I felt like really changed my position within the jiu community one to the public but more so with the mm. with fellow competitors because that really changed like my relationships with people and certain people were very vocal about that um but when all that happened I mean we look at now like I mean I don't even I don't know what I'm gonna get in trouble for saying but I'm commentating the Grand Prix tomorrow and one of the Just people that is largely responsible for this whole situation oh, oh sorry oh, highly sorry, invo- I was coughing <laughs> coughing oh sorry <laughs> who's highly involved is in the event i'm gonna be commentating yeah i'm gonna be 
<laughs> I'll be commentating and be like, oh, if you scroll back to like that month and whatever year it was, you're going to see a lot of other things that I said about this person. Like, you know, and so, so what kind of, but then, yeah, there's a lot of conversation there, like cancel culture. Is it always, you know, it's always, it's not, but it's not, I mean, but, I think it's fair to you know, be some you voice your opinion without being like, I've canceled this person, but it's like, they, they, I can, no, like, <laughs> like you I don't can, have that power. <laughs> I feel like I, I think you should fucking pat yourself on the back and speaking up about it because it, it is really hard. Like, there's probably certain people that I'm friends with that I don't realize has fucking done something. You know, we've all made mistakes sort of vibes. Right, okay. Right. But there's certain mistakes that keep being made <laughs> and no accountability. Yes, that's what's, that's yes. the issue. It's like, I'm not saying you can't make a mistake and then you could apologize for said mistake and then act yeah. differently, but you keep repeating the same thing and you've not said yes. sorry. You just, that is, we yes. should all just accept it because you're good at jujitsu. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, and that's where like the power play comes in, like because like you said, there's mistakes, things happen, whatever. I mean, I don't make um, the mistake of whatever. harboring I mean, rapists. People are still so harboring. I don't know, like Serene, like that's more than a mistake. Yeah. That's just an active choice. <laughs> right, 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 and and so you know these things happen, but like when there's repeated things, and I think it's especially harping on the power differential when someone is continuing to take advantage of that and use that over and over. That's really really telling and it's very scary when nothing happens to change it um so unfortunately like going back to the question earlier of like what happens behind the scenes with with professional athletes i think we probably get the most information about this than anyone else especially the women because people feel like mm. they can tell us or they can confide um in us and it's hard not usually having a great answer to to that you know i think that's yeah, really definitely. tough too for me it's, it's it, it, it kind of sometimes I'm like I wish I didn't know certain I know it sounds really bad like it is better that I know really it is better that I know but no, sometimes I'm like fuck yeah. I'd really like to not know that about this person because yeah. now I can't associate myself like, during that, I'm like well she's awful I don't mean like that I mean like that sounds kind of bad but yeah. I mean it's like I'd like to I wish that wasn't no, true and I wish I yeah now I have to sort of now I just can't and I have to explain why I can't during and it's gross yeah man it's it's so common. You know what? You know what's so crazy is uh, I had a one of my exes. I had a big situation with it. It was domestic violence, and the legal system was involved. This person's in the jiu-jitsu community, and um, basically, someone uh, an, at a coach at another academy knew about this situation and had this conversation with me about it because this person was mm. trying to go train at that gym. And basically, at the end of the conversation, the gist of it was like well, I don't think we're going to have him at the gym, but it's like, you know, for other reasons, it's not really because of that. We just don't want him. But, you know, the sad truth is, Kendall, is that like, you shouldn't tell anybody about this and you really should just, you know, what? keep this to yourself. <laughs> and I, uh, well, here, here, to, just to be fair to this person, I mean, the, what was behind that is he was saying like, well, you know, this is unfortunate, but the truth is that this hurts your reputation. Like if you go public about something or you keep telling people, like now people don't, they, they associate this negative thing with you. And it, not every instant, not every kind of situation is like this, but like I think with sexual abuse and domestic violence, like this, you know, the victim is now kind of painted with a certain color. And so it's, you know, it's people don't want to deal with that person or they don't want to talk to them or they don't want, it's, it's a, it closes you off from certain circles. So I think the intention behind the statement was like so kind of trying to protect though. me, but, but it's so damaging. Right. And, and honestly, like it's really hard to, to feel comfortable talk. And, you know, I've had to learn along the way, like when you overshare and when you don't, cause some yeah. people are not safe to have those conversations with, but it teaches you a lot. It's like a reinforcement of like, Oh, okay. I really need to be careful. Like who I share these For your own parts sake. of myself with. And when for my own sake, but then when there's somebody in the community who is potentially mm -hmm. maybe doing this to somebody else, it's like, how do you know when to share and when to not? So I think the secrecy around all of this is what I was getting at is a really, really big part of it, um, especially with the power differential. If you feel like you have a smaller voice or even if you have a larger voice, you're scared of what will happen to you if you share or your yeah. or people's perception of you. And we saw that with the guard guy that you were talking about <laughs> <laughs> earlier too. I mean, the person on the other end of that received death yeah. threats and stuff when i saw the time, comments so it's like about that on, to the victim i was like i don't know if i could ever speak up yeah after seeing that and i would consider myself a strong yeah. woman you know but i don't know if i could speak up yeah yeah because is it not it you know i it's it really made me, really made me think like is it worth it because literally fuck yes. that like i mean 
I know that lo- mm. a lot of women and men were very much on side. We believe her. But I fucking heard some stuff, even in my own circles, that just made me view certain people. I'll never view them the same way. You know? Mm. They were like, oh, but he's such a nice yeah. guy. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Right. Well, right. It wasn't nice to her, was he? Yeah. Um. <laughs> no. And it's it's terrifying to think that. I mean, that is the mm. reality. Like, is it worth it? You know. And so when people are trying to make the like, you ask the question. Well, I mean, I asked you like, why is this still happening? I think that's a big part of it. Is because we don't really have an answer for handling yeah. harmed parties in a in a great manner and so then it's like yeah is it worth it or not i mean i'd like to hope it is because i'd like to hope it is i can't speak because i i've not you know i've never been thankfully never been in in, well not that exact situation um but yeah yeah it's it's it makes you think when you see that you know because especially when the you know 80 percent not 80 percent but like i'm just saying my own following is like 80 percent men or something um yeah yeah and i know there's so many amazing like you've got so many amazing men in my dms like oh my god like you know i post something on my story like this fucking message i got like you know just take a piss and those people are so outraged and like i think what happens a lot (laughs) is that i have so many amazing male friends who um not all men (laughs) Uh, i have such amazing male friends and because they don't they're not in circles where people act this way and and they can't imagine themselves behaving a certain way they're like but i Really? Like, I just don't see it. Like, I didn't know people did this. So sometimes I like to show it. Yeah, they're like, oh, but Easy I to write it off. You haven't seen it because yeah. you don't act that way. But let me show you the people who do. Here are my DMs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so sometimes I like doing it just so yep. they see that, look, there yeah. are creatures like this in the world. Just letting you know. Like, you don't act like that way. That's, <laughs> that's great. But just, they, they do exist and I see them all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> bringing more awareness. And you can do that. And I think, I think one of the ways that I've... <laughs> I have felt a little bit safer doing that is sharing like, hey, I've had some of these experiences without doing the big like dropping na- mm. like dropping names and going about it like in a way that's going to call, call a lot of attention to me and that other person and kind of stir things up. It also can be really, really yeah. traumatizing in my experience, too. Um, so there are different yeah. ways to go about it. But at the same time, then you talk about the whole situation with fight sports last year. And it's like, well, exactly. what happens if no one says names then? Like, like it does. It does create change. It does. Like we're so both I, now like I don't want to be a associated with yeah. that right so that ha- it has caused change yeah 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 like kudos to those women wow yeah that's i mean and on and they the way that they've been treated since then like certain people treat them really well but other people they will they will just not associate with themselves because it's like there's a stain and that is uh it's it's terrifying to think that that's, yeah but that that also that's like really... you know you've gone back to what you said about the guy who who said that to you it's like yes certain people won't want to associate themselves with you but that's a great filter. You don't want you don't want to associate yourself Good. with them because they've got something dark in yeah. their fucking yeah, exactly. cupboard, right? Like that's why they're scared of you. Mm. It's because they've got their own shit they don't want to get called out on. Yeah. It's just you know a matter of time before it comes out. Um, I think that is usually the case. That is such a good. Man, I'm so glad you said that. That is such a valuable piece of information that I'm going to use. Yeah, to filter like why else would they be bothered too. by it? Because uh, wow. they've done something similar themselves, right. but then no one's drawn attention to it. That's usually the case, right? Yeah, yeah. Or they're protecting someone who had, or they, or they're friends with people who have. Yeah, for sure. Because then if they, yeah, exactly. They're, they're like, okay, all right. <laughs> we can talk about that forever. I'm gonna change. <laughs> we, we, we're gonna. No, don't say sorry. I'm gonna start pulling out my DMs la, la, la. and just kind of like reading them aloud, and we're just. <laughs> We're gonna get real crazy. We're gonna <laughs> some cancels. Oh. Oh, I'm, just I'm, not, I'm not here to cancel, but it would be. But but privately, it is funny. So I just want y'all to know if you are sending some crazy it's stuff, it chat. is getting shown to multiple people. It's probably. in the group chat. <laughs> it's in the group chat. We've got all the group chats. You, it's, it's all chat. you being slated about your tiny knob <laughs> in the group chat. It's it's saved. Maybe maybe multiple group chats, definitely multiple albums. But yeah, so be careful, especially if you have your wife and your kids like in your Instagram and then you're just having the audacity to write things in black and white in a DM. <laughs> I just you're like you're really brave. I like I seriously have questions. I'm like how yeah, I'm like, this is black and white. Like, you didn't even send a voice memo. You really like that's as easy as a screenshot. That you didn't even put mm. any effort into hiding this at all. Like, then you got to wonder, this has got to work on some people. Because if you're doing it with, like, everybody, this has got to work a certain percentage of the time. That's scary, yeah. too. 
Power differential. <laughs> All right. Okay. Moving on. We got a couple more questions we're going to get through. And these are going to be oh, way more based around. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Have you ever experienced minor or major? Whoa. Minor or major? Oh, burnout. I thought it was a burns. It's like I've never been in a fire now, but uh, it's very specific. A uh, burnout. Yeah. Oh, Just actually. emotional. <laughs> Bye, Bona. Anyway. Uh, uh, burnout. Um, I know what? It's probably going to sound weird, but uh, yes. But during COVID, I felt I was very mm. depressed during COVID. Like, I feel like mm. we all sort of forgot it in sort of a strange fever dream. Like, I don't even remember, like, yeah. a lot of it. But I <laughs> it just like, was that real? I literally went insane. Like, yeah. I was mad. I But, mm. like, a lot of people around me were also mad. Oh. But I was particularly mad. Like... And I'm, I'm saying it yeah. in like a jokey way, but like literally, I think there's something wrong with me. Um, but you know, like it was a cause, you know, there was a oh. cause behind it. So obviously, once things subsided back to relatively normal. Um, but I'd right. say, like, even though I obviously wasn't able to compete, I felt really not burned out. I guess burned out is the wrong word because I've never been, you know, I, I taught a lot of seminars recently and I felt burned out afterwards, but it's very much like short term. It wasn't, um, you know, I had a little rest for a week and yeah, yeah I had a rest for a week and Need it was like recover. literally just overtired yeah. and stuff. Um, and I am a bit burnt out yeah. from traveling a lot, even though I'm currently traveling. Uh, <laughs> woo, but I can't stop. <laughs> but uh, I would say during COVID was probably like, I wasn't burnt out per se, but I was definitely, I fell out of love with jiu-jitsu. Um, so when I fell back in love with it, that yeah. was like the best feeling in the world. Like I was like this, like I, was, I remember competing at Gi Worlds and I was just mm. like, I genuinely was just so happy to be there. Like I was like nearly crying because I was like, I'm so happy that I love this so much. And I just, I'm just, I'm here and I'm enjoying it. And I'm looking at the pyramid yeah. and I'm just like, I love this so much. Like that was such a nice feeling to have dreamed after ages of yeah. just hating it and being so like angry. Not at jiu -jitsu. Like I kind of was like angry at jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. I'm angry at the circumstances dream. Um, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, angry at life and, and jiu-jitsu is such I'm a big like, part you know, of your in life. You know, in the grand scheme of things, like, people, people were dying. Drain, like, <laughs> but, like, I, I then laugh. I didn't mean to yeah, laugh yeah. at people who died. I just mean people were literally dying. Drain, like, <laughs> well, I were, laugh, too, so people in health, we're together. People in healthcare yeah. were having the worst times of their life. And I understand that in that grand scheme of things, I was having a very fine time. But... But it doesn't yeah. take away from your own personal experience as far as if you consider where your baseline is. Because we yeah, don't just we can take myself. everyone else out of the equation. If you just look at your baseline and then what happened mm. during that time, I mean, that, that is traumatic. It was definitely like a huge... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank validating. You. I'm, like, I'm pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> you were traumatized. I was traumatized from sitting in my house. But, <laughs> but in all seriousness, it's very much like... You know, they were saying, we will never shake hands again. I was like, well... Oh. How are we gonna slap bump? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other day I was rolling and someone's sweat dropped to the back of my throat. Well, that's not gonna be possible, is it? I mean, <laughs> we made eye contact and I was like, <sighs> not was quite. Off. But <laughs> like I've tasted you now. <laughs> We're very close. We're, We're really close. <laughs> yeah. Intimate, intimate. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you intimately. <laughs> but yeah so coming back you feel like it just kind of like mitigated the burnout immediately oh, I, or I, I, was it, a it was really process? slow I was like I was I went back competing and I was like okay wh why why am I not back to normal why am I not loving it like I went to I think the first competition back mm. which was really funny was Nogi Worlds it was a little one um and I was like <laughs> just sort of going through the motions and I won and I was like but like I didn't I I, I won, but I, I didn't perform very well. I, that sounds really annoying to say, like, oh my god, I mean, but really I didn't. And no, uh, but you didn't feel. I was yeah, like, I fucking hate this. I did. Who's number one? That was a little bit better, but I just overall I was just like very flat and like numb and just sort of going through the motions. Mm. So that wasn't good. But for a yeah. gee worlds, I was like, I actually yeah. really like this again. Yay! <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's get well. It paid off. <laughs> <laughs> it showed <laughs> so so when you think about man the next 
15 years. You're so young and there's so much ahead as far as like, I know you were saying it could be months, it could be years, it could be current. Like when you think about your career and not even just your career, but just your life in general, because you are so much more than just jujitsu. What excites um, you about the next 15 me, years? It's probably, I'm really excited to be a coach and have my own gym. It's something I'm putting off mm. because I am really lucky that I can compete and solely focus on competing. Like I'm going to be teaching soon um, in New York, but uh, my focus will still be competition. I'm not going to teach much. It's only going to be like three classes a week. Like that's it. Um, And that's just more like, you know, I'm seeing it as Mm. this is like my apprenticeship on how to run a gym myself, how to, I know teaching, it makes me a better instructor, but um, overall, like I really want to be a really good coach and I really want to have a, extensive team like a really I want to have a good team I want to have a competitive team and a, and a competitive female team as well you know like I want obviously I want men to come to my gym too but um I you know as a woman as a, <laughs> as a, fe- a future female coach I would like to have a, a really strong competitive women's team because yeah. I think as much as I love competing and it's like my number one thing that I love in all the world it's a very and I, I know you probably know this yourself like it's a very selfish sort of pathway Mm -hmm. and I think it can be hard when because even though I am more than jujitsu right like I'm more than my my wins and my losses but it can really feel like um that's not the case do you mean particularly when my social life or my 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 personal life isn't going uh so well right like right now I'm fine (laughs) but you know in the past I've had things going on behind the scenes and it's like (laughs) if I lose I have nothing I mean, which is not true. Mm. It's not true. Like, yeah, exactly. Everything. But it can feel like it. Yeah. I remember like, but it can like feel like season. that though. Here's another over Yeah. You ready? Uh, <laughs> I was crying to Rosa. <laughs> I was like, if I, if I win, I'm still alone. <laughs> I was like, you dumb bitch. <laughs> and she was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like, no, you got me. I was like, I can't shag you. <laughs> <laughs> well i could but you know I, I, it's I, limited I um <laughs> unfortunately i really wish i was <laughs> um but <laughs> you know but like i was deadly serious i was like, oh my, I was, like afraid to win because i was like but then what am i changing it's just stupid yeah. i've made new goals straight away i was like oh well i actually want to achieve this now but um yeah. it was almost like being afraid of it yeah but it, it definitely feels like that <laughs> it's a bit worrying. yeah oof yeah that no, it's it's a big one, though. I mean, I, I think as athletes, we do a lot to separate our identity away. I mean, if, if, you, <sighs> if you're smart, smart, you try to do something to separate your identity away from just who you are as an athlete or wins and losses because – you know, it's interesting. People have careers and hobbies. When you're an athlete, it typically it's kind of like, yeah. well, I have a hobby and it turned into my career. And <laughs> it's your entire life. And also if you want to own a school, okay, well now it's your future. And if it's like your friends, your family, your partner, I mean, everybody is, it's it's all you do. So it's very hard to separate. So then when other things are not going so well in the background, it can feel like this is what is probably yeah. like, what am I without this? You know, so uh Gosh, I'm so glad that you're not feeling that way anymore. But I, but it's a very normal thing, and I think a lot of people go through the same kind of feeling. It's like, well, if I don't have this area sorted, then how am I gonna? Yeah. What What am I gonna rely Definitely. on? Definitely. Like, I, I, I do feel like a lot of the pressure was taken off by winning, because like I was always really concerned about like, what if I don't win these things? Will I be okay? Because I, I think. Uh, from mm. seeing judo athletes, and you probably know yourself of wrestling as well, because it's an Olympic sport it's the olympics everything's about the that olympics, and like that was yeah so ingrained in me as a child it was like olympics olympics and you're nothing if you don't get to the olympics it's kind of like you know and, and i've seen athletes come out of that yeah. and they are not okay like they're it's like i was talking about it when, um one of my friends before she's come from judo as well she's uh her name's julia she's dating owen livesey and oh no they're more than that more than mm. dating not more, but like partners but <laughs> they have a child um, <laughs> but, uh, just casually dating with their baby um but you know they, we both come from judo back we used to compete against each other and it was like you can't go back to normal life after that um guys competing every weekend yeah. you know and yeah. it's it's like it's like when you compete and you get this big high from winning it's like when you take not that I've ever taken drugs, but drugs. it's like when you take drugs. <laughs> um, I've never had that experience. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> when you get that big high, 
and then you get the come down and, that, like, and that's when you lose yeah. right when you lose it's that massive low and it's like, such a deeper low it's not because like when you go to like a regular job you kind of like I'm not saying mm. you don't get highs and lows I don't mean that at all but like it's less dramatic than this huge high of competing this huge adrenaline yeah. rush and then yes you exactly you're fighting a person Dream, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to fight a yeah. bitch on the ground I don't know what's going on um, and then not a bitch. They're always they're always very lovely. <laughs> <the worst. laughs> they're all very nice, actually. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's like it's, you get that huge high from winning, and then it's like you could be going to the Olympics or like all this like drummed into you. And then trying to go to a normal job, yeah. you're just like I crave drama. Like I need, and then you apply that to relationships. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the problem. It's me. I was like, there's sort of, like I'm the red flag. <laughs> I'm the issue now, like literally though. <laughs> so it's like, no, I really, really am. Um, oh I've become the thing that I feel most. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's like really hard to like. You can't. How do you go back to fucking working a nine to five after that? It, like, so a lot of people leave that. They and especially right. in judo when you don't have. Like I dropped out of school at, at sixteen. I don't have an education above that. I know a lot of people did yeah. go to university, but a lot of people were sort of encouraged mm. to leave school and just focus on it. Um, you know, the smart ones didn't, or the people yeah. with, with, good, <laughs> with good parents. <laughs> I have good parents. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't value education. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like, you know, it's just... It, and then you see them and they, they, they suffer really badly with the mental health health afterwards because they, they, they don't have any yeah. qualifications above a certain amount they, or they just don't have any passions of things they want to go into. And even when they do, they're just like, it's just this numb, same level. You don't get the same high. So, yeah. 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 And that's whether they win or lose, which I think is really fascinating. In the wrestling world, you see that too. People come out and they, you know, they've done four Olympic cycles. They're 30 something or they're late, whatever that, you know, 32 and they may have a medal. They may not. And on, you know, in both of those scenarios, you find people that are mm. just deeply, deeply depressed and lost. And it's, it's really scary. So it's, it's really amazing to see after coming out of ADCC and coming out of this big year, because we compare yeah. ADCC to the Olympics, like in our community, um, as best we can, like to say like, okay, well, you know, I had to readdress my goals and what, can you just talk, like, I think this is a great place to finish up because it's really enlightening and it's really, it's really inspiring to be feeling those things, to be having so much stuff going on behind the scenes. You've had the wildest year of your career, um, a lot of highs and a lot of lows and a lot of change in locations and all that kind of thing, a lot of personal stuff. So with coming out of that, with the win, you got the thing, right? It's like, okay, you know, most people would look at that and be like, okay, well, you must be elated on top of the world. Clearly life still goes on and there's all this stuff that still kind of hits you like, okay, well, I did it. Now what? What do you feel like you're excited for moving forward? I know you said opening a school and having like the women's competitors, but when you think about your life, why is that not what defines you, even though you won? Like, why is that like, not your defining moment? Of your life? Which bits are they defining? The ADC? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> like yeah. yeah like like getting the thing right like because we talk about people people being kind of lost yeah. either way afterward they don't really know what to do with their lives what what why do you feel like that's not gonna happen to you or what um, what feels good about I mean, that the way you've set yourself I up I think now like especially I don't want to say because I've won them because I, I think I think I, I was getting around to being okay if I didn't as well you know like I, I had to I had to sort of think mm -hmm. that way like I think for, for me it was focusing on it, it was getting positive feedback from teaching um, I'm by no means an amazing teacher or anything, but I, I you know, people mm. would say they enjoyed. Thank you. Your seminar was my favorite. So if you guys ever have a chance to go to a fiance seminar or host her, because we hosted her, it Thank was amazing. You. Everyone loved it. I appreciate it was, that. Yeah, you were a great um, teacher. It was and, you know, I, I got some nice, even if it was, you know, I can be a lot better with how I teach details, but people like were like, oh, you were just personable or, or whatever. They just thought it was fucking funny or whatever it is, Doreen. They enjoyed it. And like, that's lovely to hear. And I think I got some nice feedback um yeah. from that and you know I, I'm not particularly talented at anything <laughs> I'm, I'm good at jiu-jitsu I can say that I'm good at jiu-jitsu because I've got evidence um but I you know anything else I am tragic at like I'm not particularly athletic outside of jiu-jitsu um and you know I'm not very smart either but, you know, I know what I you know I know <laughs> no I'm not being thing I just you know oh my god <laughs> <laughs> judo let me, let's read through the comments you know, again judo black belt <laughs> mma four and oh literally everyone loves your I, seminars you know, your this, instructionals are amazing nice like you are like, okay people like this so then it made me think okay well i can I, 
I like yeah. teaching. I, I really love teaching. Um, it's it's not as, you know, yeah. and I, I, would, I would corner someone and I'd be like, God, I, I love seeing them win. Do you know, I, I love that. It was like you, you deal with people. I, I loved yeah. trying to like help yeah. people and, and, and get them to feel the way yeah. I'd felt like when I would compete. And, and another thing is like I've struggled so much with being let down in, in, in coaching, you know, like I... Yeah. you know I really felt like the pain of that of, of having someone who who didn't want to root for you anymore mm. um and <laughs> and and that was you know really pain like probably the yeah yeah this sounds really dramatic but the worst like some of the worst pain I've had like that that rejection so yeah it, it feels like a it feels like a betrayal only, too yeah the <laughs> mm. I, only I don't want any part of it <laughs> but um yeah like it is it feels, it's really painful to feel that so um more than ever I want to be and like obviously now I'm, I'm training with JT and he's coaching me and that's fucking amazing like that's the dream yeah. and he's such a brilliant coach and and I'm excited mm. to be in New York and to learn from him and and he's so he's always kind always kind and I want to follow that example because sometimes I'm mm. not kind um, but I don't want to be like that. So I'm going to, you know, yeah. try to fucking copy that. You know, like that's a great example. Someone who, who would hold me accountable if I wasn't yeah. nice. Do you mean? So, um, and, and just obviously mm. he's got amazing details. And I, but I think that's such a minor thing. I think, I really think that obviously being able to teach well is one thing, but being able to be personable and bring out the best in people is something else. And JT is someone who's very good at bringing out the best in you. Um, and, and, you know, if I would get upset in training, he would acknowledge mm. it. He wouldn't ignore me if I was upset. Like, not that I was like, please give me attention. It wasn't, he wouldn't coddle me and be like, oh, poor you. He would yeah, just be like, yeah. right, let's switch back on. Let's focus. You know, he would acknowledge that I was upset, but he would be like, let's get back to it. And he would, you know, and then I was like, okay, well, thank you. Kind of like, okay, yeah, nice. And then he yeah. would go on Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> so, but the music on. <laughs> She's crying again. But I really, I really appreciated that. Dream just like being able to handle people. And I think I'll enjoy it because I do feel yeah. like I'm someone who, I I'm, I don't know, maybe a little bit of as, as women, we tend to be a bit more switched on and stuff like that usually as well. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, I want to well, be able you to care. help you care you know, deeply. people as yeah. best I can as well so I think I think I'll enjoy that more because it's less selfish mm. I get a lot of joy out of watching other people achieve their goals um so that's nice Do you mean? and and I think I'll enjoy that period of my life mm. even more which is exciting because I'm having such a good time now and I'm love I love competing but I do think I will enjoy that more from the little bits I've done I'm like I'm excited for that because I think I'll be overall happier yeah yeah Mm, yeah that makes total sense and it's 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 beautiful when for athletes that are listening to look at you're in the height of your career and you're planning yeah. what's coming next doesn't mean you're not present in the moment enjoying what you're doing but it's looking forward to like you know yourself well enough to know that you're gonna need to throw yourself into yeah. something <laughs> other than just fighting bitches yeah on that's the, floor the thing it's like forever I, I, I'm not in a position forever, right now right? to be a coach because I'm traveling constantly and I'm focused on my own career so right. I'm not doing it right now. I'm waiting until I've, I've got no regrets that I, I can be fully present. And I think it is important to, like, what's next? Like, plan that beforehand. Because I'm not saying, like, because it's not going to last forever. Like, and, and it's important to recognize that the success I'm having now is fleeting. And anything anyone has to say that's really negative to do with it doesn't matter. But also anything that has, anyone who's blowing smoke up my ass, it doesn't matter either. Like, it's... So to sort of consider that as well. Yeah. It's going to only last like a couple mm. months. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So, <laughs> okay, last question, I promise. So now that we've talked about all oh, these, well, I was going to say amazing things. Some of them were not so amazing. Some of them were <laughs> a little, a little darker. <laughs> um, okay, so going back to the same question as earlier, after going through all of that, if you imagine what it feels like to be like, yeah, I have a grip on my life. What does that feel like to you? Is it the same? Is it different? Like, what do you imagine for yourself? Is not necessarily what your um, life would look like, but what would that I feel think like? Calm. I'd like to feel. <laughs> I'd like to feel a bit calm. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I really think <laughs> for me, it's it's hard to explain it in terms of like what look like. Sorry, you said not what it looked like, but I I, I do. 
sort of envision myself Even and like I know it's like I'm enjoying where I am now because it is chaotic and it is the opposite of, of what you talk about like having a grip of your life um but I think there's like ha- mm. yeah well, like it I, be I a bit chaotic for you to have a like, grip too like it's different for everybody these are the years I'm gonna look back on and be like oh, that was a fun time because like for me and for Rosa mm. as well like our whole uh, motto yeah. this year was very much do it for the plot um <laughs> I was like, should I do this? She'd be like, yeah, do it for the pot. Like, do, it, do it for the group chat. Um, yeah. So, and you just take every yeah, opportunity yeah. to just go for things. Right? Exactly. Um, so should I hop on that flight? Yes, do this right now. But um, I would like to, you know, eventually, like, I, you yeah. know, have my own gym and 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 have more of a calm pace to my life as well. And yeah, like, be at home more, be closer to my family, all those sorts of things. Um, so I'm just taking opportunities I have now yeah. so I don't have any regrets and I can do those things and, and feel at peace with those things. Mm, I like that. And I like what you said about the acceptance piece of it, because like, in my opinion, I think getting a grip with the physical part of that is going to look different at a lot of different stages, depending on what your goals are and how you're aligning them. But the acceptance and the peace around where you're at is a really beautiful concept. And I think it's an Mm. easy thing to say and it's a hard thing to always be in because a lot of times we find ourselves waiting for like a, when it feels peaceful, when it feels settled. And it's like, well, you don't really know what's going to come down the line. So what if we decided to feel that now? Mm, Yeah. Beautiful. Well, Fionn, thank you so (laughs) much, man. We covered so many different topics. That's so, it's, (laughs) it's so wild man it was great and so thank you so much for sharing so much of your life and your thoughts and your really really uh valuable opinions it's it's not it's not very common to find somebody that's an expert in their field that really is comfortable or maybe uncomfortable or willing is a better word to really go deep like that and share a lot of these things that that people don't get to usually hear or know or hear your stance on and it's it's very powerful so with that being said um where we can find you is on instagram where can we find you can you we're gonna put it all in the show notes but just to be Um, clear my instagram is it's fiona not fiona um good luck spelling it out there's two f's in fion there's one f in fiona um <laughs> and there is a second f on purpose uh and then i also have tiktok and i don't put po- i don't post anything to jiu-jitsu on <gasps> no way i made a really really oh my gosh I didn't, I didn't go find my tiktok go. and you'll see the video i'm on about i i i have a mustache drawn on drawn on oh i'm so excited no is it's- there taylor swift involved Oh my god! Wait, are you gonna get world? T- are you gonna I get know, tickets I didn't get because the pre-sale. the pre-sale ended before but I got it? I, I I bought them off a reseller. I don't want to tell you how much. I don't want to tell you much. <gasps> like it was oh embarrassing. Gosh, that is. Terrible. Um, I will oh tell you. I, I, <laughs> I won't be. I won't be transparent. Oh my god. But then another I'm girl. So, I'm so excited to find like, out to because the regular offer is also going to two yeah. shows. I know. <laughs> oh my god! I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Oh, I need to find out which ones. And also, yeah, I'm going to buy tickets off of the regular sale on Friday. If I don't get them, I'll get a reseller and probably pay an arm and a leg Fuck for them. Kids, but it's, like... I don't really need to have children any day <laughs> anyway, so I'll just spend <laughs> all my money now. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. It's... <laughs> I mean, my fault, look, it only so took sorry. us like five hours to get like, me to say Fuck kids. Fuck you don't want those. Kids, <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, okay, so we'll find you there. We're gonna put in the show notes. We'll also maybe find you a Taylor Swift concert. Not sure. We'll we'll, we'll see about that. But hopefully well, I don't think <laughs> I don't you should know publicize which one you're going to. That might get a little scary. But <laughs> oh wait. Really? Christ. <laughs> find you I had a stalker once, so you don't want to chance it. Actually, I yeah, story for another time. It was the lipstick involved. They were kissing things with their lipstick all around my Yeah, it was it was it was terrible. But no Taylor Swift involved that thank time, you so we were safe <laughs> from that. that. But <laughs> all right, Fionn, thank you so much for being on. You're so <laughs> oh, you're so wonderful. Um, anything good. you want to say before we go? Oh, <laughs> well, you know, we're gonna be going. We're gonna probably delete eighty percent of that. No, I was kidding. <laughs> No, no, no. Just for, you know, just for privacy purposes. So make sure you don't get arrested or like sued or something. It's fine. <laughs> All right, Fionn. Thanks so much. And everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to episode three of Get a Grip. So I almost forgot the name of my own podcast. Oh, my gosh. See, this is what Fionn does to me. She makes me hectic. <laughs> no, it's good. I like it. It's a good version of Kendall. It's like, it's kind of like pink hair Kendall, but we just like don't bring her back very often. But we, 
<laughs> that stage of my life <laughs> was a terrifying time. But we, you know, sometimes for a podcast, it's it's entertaining enough. So Fion just brings it out of me. Yes, like like we said, <laughs> you become what you've uh, what you fear most. So. Yeah, you know, but it's okay. You can do that. You can do it with me. I don't mind. <laughs> it makes it more exciting. Uh, all right. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed and also um, got some kind of like, if you didn't get inspired, I hope you at least laughed once or twice. Definitely go follow Fion. Check out what she's doing. <laughs> like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Post it around. Send it around, especially if you want people to hear all these crazy things and, um, and have something to talk about at training tomorrow because, you know, that's really good. <laughs> really good content for that and we'll see you guys next time boom all right